Welcome back, guys, to the great Ace Attorney to Resolve. Well, last episode, we began our investigation of this new case properly by heading over to Hyde Park to check out the scene of the possible accident, the great exhibition, arriving to meet Inspectors Gregson and Lestrade, arguing with the latter having become the former's apprentice in a career change. After speaking to Gina about this turn of events and of what happened here, we picked up some debris on the ground before heading up to the experimentation stage. Having just talked to Gregson, we now investigate this new area. So let's get checking things out, starting with the uh, accident machine. Considering how badly damaged everything is, Professor Hairbrain was lucky to escape unscathed, I'd say. We should have a good look around the machine while we can, I think. Touch anything and I'll make sure I kill you before I get strung up myself, yeah? I, I won't touch a thing, I promise, so please, spare a thought for your digestion. Anyway, do you really think this machine could actually disassemble people like the Professor claims? Yes, looking totally incredulous. Give it a rest, sunshine. If we were allowed to examine all this bleeding scrap metal, maybe we could answer that question. But we can't, can we? Because of the annoying rules, you mean? Exactly! The annoying, obstructive, flaming rules! Oh, look at the base of the machine there. Oh yes, there's a tool of some kind poking through the wire mesh. It's a screwdriver, I think. Oh, isn't it a lovely one? The handle is in the shape of a capital letter A. It is? Oh, yes, you're right. What's the matter with you? Don't touch anything, I said. Touch anything, I'll make sure I'll kill you before I get straight up myself, I said. Yes, yes, I understand. Sorry. I only touched it a teeny weeny bit. Well, Gregsy, I'm very curious about the screwdriver. Really, very, very curious. Of course, your ladyship. You're so clever, your ladyship. Fancy spotting something like this. But I'm afraid I can't let you have it. But Bruno found it first. I assure you, I'll investigate it thoroughly. He's gone off with it. Hm, that was very mean, I'm afraid. Inspector Gregson is going to make a very clumsy and embarrassing mistake in next month's instalment now. Poor Gregsy. Can't defame him. Oh, that's it. <laughs> okay, I want to examine everything! Right, you done it, Mr. Nadoro. Sorry. Isn't it about time you were leaving? Or rather, it is about time you were leaving. That lot are here now. That lot? Forensic investigation team. They'll be giving me the Evo in a minute, too. Oh dear, poor Gregsy. Here, have another cup of my special blend to cheer you up. <laughs> ah, that ain't the spot. Yep, it's every time. Well, at least I've seen the scene with my own eyes. It looks like this is as far as we're going to get with our investigations here, at least. I've been thinking. Ernie might know something, mightn't he? About what? About Mr. Reaper? About what happened to Lord Van Zeek, you mean? Because it sounds like something very significant occurred after he graduated from university. Something that completely changed his life. Maybe, but I have no idea where to find Mr. Sholmes at the moment. He's in the middle of some big case, isn't he? Here, this is what you need. What's this? Some kind of entrance ticket. Madame to spells. Is this supposed to mean something to me? You don't know it. It's the most popular attraction in London at the moment. It's very close to Baker Street, actually. We could go now if you like. No, no, no. We don't have time for visiting attractions today, Iris. We have a big trial tomorrow. But that's where Hurley is. What? At, at this popular London attraction? Yes. How is it that you know where he is? Hurley told me, but he told me to keep it a secret from you, Runo. Madame to spells. I don't see how it could be related to the case we're investigating here, but then... Stranger things have happened, and when they happen, Mr. Sholmes is usually at the heart of them. You mean Madame to Saws, right? <laughs> I don't know. Will we see waxworks or not? 
Right, what else is there to actually examine? Because I can stay here for a little bit more and examine what I intended to. What is that gigantic thing over there? It looks like an enormous water wheel. Oh, that's a Ferris wheel. There'll be people riding inside those little cabins you can see. Why? Well, they rotate nice and slowly, so it's a wonderful way to see the surrounding scenery. Wait, it's turning, but it looks completely still. Yes, that's because it's turning so slowly. One complete revelation takes... Revolution, even. Takes about half an hour. If you were mad enough to go on one, it would be more fun to whiz around fast, don't you think? I feel as though you might have just invented a new sort of ride there, Runo. A lot you could get up to in half an hour, isn't there? All right, anything else? So I'm amazed this isn't examinable. The William and Turner stuff. All these chairs... Oh, well, there actually wasn't that much examinable, except in the scenery. There are all sorts of strange buildings here in the Great Exhibition Grounds, aren't there? I seem to remember something similar being exhibited in Japan one time. Oh, in your country, Runo. I do wish I could go and see it. I present a particularly steely samurai of a present of one of Hurley's stories I'd written especially. And see if I couldn't get Hurley into a jam against some Bartitsu Master Ninjas. Um, you might not find as many of those sorts of people around as you think, Bartitsu. Oh, well, that's dull. Oh, but I do know a prosecutor of a Cholmage top knot I could introduce you to. A Cholmage? Really? Do you think I could have my picture taken with him? Do you? Assuming he's recovered from the trim Kazuma gave him a year ago, yes. Well, we've got news for you about that. Meanwhile, up here we have balloons galore. Is each individual balloon examinable? So those are people carrying balloons dangling silently in the skies over London. I always thought the day would come when humans would discover how to fly. But I never imagined it would involve them being suspended from colourful floating temari handballs. I'm sure it must feel amazing being up there among the clouds. Let's take a ride together, Runo, please! If I'm being perfectly honest, I would like to try it. Well, about a cast iron guarantee that the thing won't plummet to the ground, I'm too scared. Oh well, in that case, I should tell you what Hurley said. It's physically impossible for a flying balloon to plummet to the ground as long as it doesn't explode. Yes. Call me crazy, but I think that exploding part might play on my mind a little. That is the thing that would play on mine. That amazing horn-shaped device is pointing towards the crystal tower. I suppose once people are disassembled by the machine, they're shot out of that thing to wherever they're going. I don't think it was supposed to shoot anything, Runo. It was set up to beam people to the crystal tower, where they'd be reconstructed in their original form. Well, I don't like the look of it. If it was as amazing as it looks, the accident wouldn't have happened in the first place, of course. I suppose that's true, yes. But nothing ever goes according to plan, does it? Well, we've already checked out all the important things of the area. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been told to move along. However, now we're going to Madame to Spells. This is where Hurdy is. I'd love to know what he's up to, wouldn't you? A museum of interesting waxwork exhibits not far from Baker Street. It is exactly what I thought it would be. And where do we got the spells from? So we enter the Museum of Waxworks. One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> what? What is this place? L look at all these t terrifying scenes. But why are all the p people so still? Guillotines, ruthless murderers. I know what I'll be dreaming about tonight. They're all wax models. They're amazingly realistic, aren't they? What do you think, Runo? Shocked? W w w wax models? Ah! I I read about d d dead bodies and wax once in a m m magazine about strange phenomena. Depending on how c c c corpses are kept after death, parts of them could turn to wax. Apparently, it's c called a. A, a, di, a dipper a diposa I don't know how to say that stop talking about creepy things like that Bruno you're scaring me 
Anyway, adipose egg doesn't form readily, you know. It's only in very specific... Ah! What now? I, I've just remembered something else I read in another m magazine about strange phenomena. There was an old lady, maybe a, a, a witch, who used to pour molten wax over c c corpses and put them on display. None of the exhibits in here are real. They're all entirely man-made replicas. They can't be. Do you really expect me to believe that? Just look at them. Oh. There's no way anybody could make models of people that are this realistic. And they're all such gruesome scenes. Wait. What is it? Oh, no. I must be seeing things. <laughs> About too many things are we seeing here. What the hell? Is this an arm? It looks like an arm, doesn't it? Maybe one of the waxwork models has fallen over. You you don't think it could be the work of one of the mass murderers in here, do you? Bruno, so stop scaring me. Is it a wax arm or a real one? Come on, you're always pointing that finger of yours in court. Poke that arm now and see how it feels. Objection! That big heavy curtain is in a very prominent position, isn't it? I have a nasty feeling there's going to be something truly terrifying behind it. Oh yes! That's the famous to spells special exhibit! It depicts one of England's most notorious killers. Do you want to pay the extra fee and have a look? Pay more money to be even more terrified. Oh, let me think about that for a moment. It was only a suggestion. Please do not touch the statues. Statues available, please inquire. Let's go left first. Is... is this a, some infamous m m murderer? Yes, called Jane the Ripper. All her victims were young women. I... I knew it. You could tell by the way she's holding that knife. Sure sign of a m m murderer. Well, yes. Ah! What's the matter, Rudo? I've worked it out. I know what she's doing. She's trying to fill that bathtub with blood so she can have a soak in a victim's gore. Um, not according to the information about the exhibit on the little board here. It doesn't mention anything about the bathtub. Really? Sorry, I don't think it's significant. I still think it has to be there for a reason. And this is the thing. You could put a sign up, but nothing is more horrific. <laughs> like, you could put a scene in front of you, but nothing is more horrific than your own imagination, where it might take you. <laughs> the intended thing? That. Nah. Where your imagination might go? Way worse. <laughs> Guess there's only this scene here. These models are so well made, I can't tell what's a waxwork and what's a real human. Or maybe all the exhibits are real people. And when it's closing time and all the visitors have gone home, they suddenly start moving about. Ugh. Just thinking about it makes me wish it was closing time already and I was on my way home. They're listening in. Oh, that's a funny place for a little ladder. What is it? Is something wrong? No, it's just that in Japanese we have a totally different word for a ladder that falls in half like that. We do in English too, you know. It's a step ladder, or just steps. So be careful of making assumptions about other cultures, Runo. That's how wars are started. I didn't realize step ladders were an international point of contention, but the rider makes an astute point. Ugh. Is, is this an example of Western Tsuchigiri? I don't know what that is. You know, when an unscrupulous samurai randomly attacks a passerby to test his sword. I still don't know, no. But actually, a waxwork samurai would probably be hugely popular. Could you model it, do you think, Bruno? Doing that Tsuchigiri thing you mentioned? 
Well, I do have a sword, but I have no intention of testing how sharp it is on a human subject. For now, at least. It's... It's... The Great Detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes has his own wax statue in here. Really? Well, he is world famous, after all. It's an uncanny resemblance, isn't it? It makes my skin cruel to look at it. I know! But look, Bruno, you can kick this early and he doesn't move a muscle. You can't go around kicking the exhibits, Iris. Wait. It... It just moved, I'm sure. And not just a little bit, either. Huh? Really? Did it? And look closely. There are beads of sweat on the face of this waxwork. Model. Sh shall we move on, Iris? Over there, look, there's a great murder scene to enjoy, much more appealing. Hold it! My dear fellow, I take exception to your recoiling in such a manner as if you've seen something truly abhorrent. Mr. Mr. Sholmes! I knew it! Iris, what possessed you? I strictly forbade you from divulging my temporary waxwork secret to Mr. Nalahodo. Temporary waxwork? What do you mean? And that kick, could you not have exercised a little more restraint? You winded me! Aruna has something he needs to ask you. Ah, question! And I thought you'd probably be getting bored too. So here we are! Hmm, well, I can't deny that your time was impeccable. A mere two minutes more being stationary like that. And my great brain upon which all my success has been built would have turned to wax. Thank goodness we arrived in time. Indeed, in many ways, a pair of you just saved the world from an unimaginable loss. Oh, Hurley, you do talk like to talk nonsense, don't you? He could know something, it's true. About Lord Van Zeeks and what happened in the past to change him. Now that you're here, let's take our time. How can I be of assistance? Well, you're in luck. I'm suddenly quite taken with the idea of conversing. Oh, well, actually, I'm in quite a hurry. And if my eyes don't deceive me, I believe something is afoot within the walls of this very museum. Most fascinating case, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Moreover... I have a strong suspicion that it is related to the matter about which you've come to me now. But how could it be? We shall speak again presently, my dear fellow. But for now, I must return to my work. What? Back to being a temporary waxwork exhibit? I can still converse with him, though. What is this place? Madame Tuspels came to London from France three years ago, I understand. Since she opened this little waxwork museum last year, it's enjoyed great popularity in London. There are museums like this in Japan too, but these displays are something else. I mean, they aren't made from actual real people, are they? The extreme realism of these waxwork models is a particular secret of the Tuspels family, they say. They earned renown during the French Revolution for waxworks of victims of the guillotine. Ugh, that sounds grim. The gruesome scenes were portrayed with such realism in the expressions of the faces of the condemned. Apparently, the sculptors would make the models directly from the corpses, right there at the site of the executions. At the... That really turns my stomach. That's just one of several legends about the Tuspels family. Whether there's any truth in it, I couldn't say. But anyways... This museum houses models of famous people from all over the globe. Nevertheless, the most popular area of the museum by quite some margin is this house of horrors. H house of ho ho horrors? Of course, visitor numbers are dwindling now as a result of the great exhibition. But people usually flock here to see the exhibits of some of London's most vile criminals at their gruesome work. Naturally, most of the miscreants portrayed here were sent to the gallows. So they're even stiffer now than the models of them. <laughs> Have you heard of poor taste? 
My dear fellow, the public live for poor taste. They yearn to be shocked. So the hideous exhibits in here are... They're all portrayals of real events that actually took place. Is it just me, or did the temperature in here just seem to drop? Anyway, I advise you not to think too deeply about what you see here. Oh, he's back to being a waxwork, is he? What do you mean by a temporary waxwork, Mr. Sholmes? Exactly what you see. I'm part of the exhibits here, catching these criminals in the act. Catching them? Every half an hour, I home in on a different killer in one of the displays and adopt a new pose to ensnare him. When members of the public come for a closer look, I offer them my hand to shake. For a shilling, I'll happily allow them to take a photograph of us. Us? Does he mean him and the waxwork murderers in here? But why, Mr. Sholmes? My dear fellow, is it obvious? For the money! He really roared at me there. Very fitting for the House of Horrors. As it stands, I may struggle to pay this month's rent, and I have the ravenous iris to consider. Oh, Hurley. I'm so hungry. If push comes to shove, I shall have to ask you to do your bit, Master Naruhodo. What's he threatening to rope me into now? So, with that in mind, how about a photograph? As a special treat, you may have your pick of the murderers and scoundrels in here. The choice is yours. Maybe some other time. Hmm. Remember, Mr. Naruhodo, ignore me at your peril. Back to being a waxwork again. Is it just me, or did his final remark there sound a lot like a curse? Well, what is it you'd like to ask me, then? Um, actually, it's... It's about Lord Van Zeeks. Ah, friend Mr. Reaper. How did you find him? Well, I trust. And so I filled Mr. Sholmes in about everything I'd learnt. About Lord Van Zeeks, about Professor Harebrain, and about the strange coincidence that they had been at university together. So I'm wondering what it was that happened to make Lord Van Zeeks such a different person. I was sure that you'd know, Hurley. You said there was something going on here in this exhibit hall before. That something was afoot. And that you believed it was related to what I wanted to ask you about. Um, Mr. Sholmes. He suddenly clammed up. Well, it seems we've reached the unavoidable... Greetings. Ah. Hello. Oh, uh, hello. Where did she appear from? And what's she wearing? Could she look any more mysterious? I hope you are appreciating my museum. Is this why it's to spells, then? Sorry, have we... Mr. Sholmes, do you know this? Not again. My apologies, I am Esmeralda to Spells. This is my museum of waxwork. What? You... You're the Madame to Spells? Bien sir. Though only 26 years young, I might add. Is that significant somehow? I'm a Madame in name only. It adds a certain je ne sais quoi. Right. Firstly, I must apologize for my waxworks. Or rather, one waxwork in particular. That'll be Mr. Sholmes, then. I was led to believe he was a great detective, but he seems... unable to settle. Next time you move from your designated exhibit, there will be toil and trouble. She sounds deadly serious. That's the problem. How am I supposed to ask Mr. Sholmes about Lord Van Zeeks now? Let's not forget what Hurley said before. About something being afoot. Right here in the museum, I mean. Yes, I know, but... I'm so curious. I want to know what's happening here. Haven't we got enough on our plate already? 
Okay. What's going on? The waxworks. Did you make all these waxworks, Madame Tuspels? I did. I am the third generation of waxwork artisans, you know. Gosh! It was my grandmother who began the tradition in my family. Her fortunes were checkered, living through the turbulent times of the French Revolution as she did. Though that is when she acquired the savior fair that lets leads to the astonishing like likeness. All these waxworks really do look as though they're alive. In fact, they look more alive than Hurley. Mm-hmm. What you see exhibited here represents the most atrocious of London's criminal past. All the waxworks were created in the presence of the real people on which they are modeled. In the hours immediately following their executions, that is the secret to the extraordinary lifelikeness. That sounds terrifying. All walks of life have similar challenges, I'm sure. To carry out one's trade par excellence, one must go to extraordinary lengths. My exhibits are a reflection of society. I create only that which the public wishes to see. Ugh. Why couldn't the public have wished for something less horrifying? Do not fear. Sorry. This room is the only one in the museum with such a macabre theme. I do hope you'll explore. There are models of famous singers, actors, politicians. Something for every taste, I hope. It was Iris who dragged me straight in here, come to think of it. Sorry, perhaps I should have eased you into things. Maybe. So the great detective that you've got wax working. Um, what's the situation with uh, that? Ah, my temporary waxwork model. He approached me some days ago, you see, with a business proposal. Oh, what sort of proposal? My dear madame, what these sparse exhibits need is the addition of a world famous great detective. Or words to that effect. Uh, naturally, I am well aware that Mr. Sholmes is widely known in London as a talented detective. It's great detective, actually. He's very specific about it. Yes, the creme de la creme, so I was keen to come to some arrangement with him, of course. But sadly, we were unable to agree terms. Let me guess. Someone wanted to charge an exorbitant price for his services. For me a 500 pounds, I will dive into your cauldron of wax this very moment. Or worse to that effect, Mr. Sholmes might have overdone it slightly with the sales pitch. Regrettably, the museum has a shortage of funds at the moment due to unforeseen circumstances. So we came to the current arrangement instead. Surely he doesn't really need to do what he's doing though, does he? I would think not, but he was very insistent. I have a 50 shilling problem that must be resolved by the morning. Or words to that effect. It's the pawnbroker. That's what it is. He must have something to redeem. Is the consulting detective work not going so well? Obviously not. Something is afoot. Um, I wonder, could I ask you something? Gwen I'm just curious, is anything going on in the museum at the moment? Some kind of incident, perhaps? Whoever suggested such a thing to you? Oh, well, it was, uh... Your temporary waxwork over there who mentioned it to me a little, uh... Oh, he's disappeared! A wax model is a work of art, not some tawdry object for trade. Ah! Ah! You! But there you are! Leaving the exhibit again when you should be working. Do you wish to be melted down? My dear Madame to spell, save your reprimands, there are more pressing concerns. The wax can wait, it's our ideas about your current problem we must throw into the melting pot instead. 
Personally, I would advise you not to involve the police. Why ever not? She's turned as white as a sheet. Because you have at your disposal a great detective whose services you may employ for a mere 50 shillings. Though, please be aware that I prefer no. Insist upon payment in advance. Very well. Let us see if the great detective is able to live up to his name, shall we? Before I engage my analytical processes, I must ask you to clarify something. What play is behind the curtain? That is the Tuspel special exhibit. There is an extra charge to see it. Ah, the special exhibit in the House of Horrors. Must depict a special killer then, I presume. Would you be so kind as to draw back the curtain, I wonder? Ah, absolument non. There's nothing amiss behind there. Nothing amiss, madame. What about the arm protruding ominously from under the curtain? Ah! I strongly encourage you to allow me to see what lies beyond before the situation worsens. Yes, very well. I will draw back the curtains, but only a soupcon. Well, we all want to see what's behind the curtain. And it sounds by the music that something logic -y and reasoning spectacularly is about to occur. So with that said, we will leave that to the next episode of The Great Ace Attorney 2. We're here in Madame to Spells. We're going to get a delight, a sight, I'm sure, once that curtain is pulled back. I will see you next time for more as we wonder how this could relate to our current predicament, our current case. Maybe we'll find out next time. I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.